Hello, I'm Patty Payne and I work with the Pike Road Arts Council in the town of Pike Road. If you have never been out to visit us, we are located at 944 Wallahatchie Road in Pike Road. If you go down Pike Road, we're about mm, three quarters of a mile down Wallahatchie from Founder Station. The reason I'm here today is because with all that's going on in the world with the COVID-19, we're not able to do our fireworks this year. And we were hoping to bring you a project that you could do at home and bring fireworks into your house, but in a fun way, in a painterly way. So I wanna show you some I've been working on, uh, trying to get ready for doing this demo for you. And I've done a few of them. This was my first attempt here. My brother thought the, uh, the fireworks were too flowery and contrived. My second attempt was, ended up being his favorite, but I kept trying. My third attempt was a little lighter. I thought, well, maybe we should see the green. But then I got to thinking, you know what? This is getting really complicated. And if I wanted you to be able to do this project at home, I needed to do it for a, any skill level. So I decided to go back to the drawing boards and I've come up with a fourth attempt. And this is my fourth attempt. And this is made, I'm gonna show you the materials in just a little while, but it's made with just a few different size brushes and some cardboard and paint. And I think anybody can do this painting at home and bring fireworks into your house for the 4th of July. So follow me on over to my table. So here you can see the work table. And I chose to paint this one flat because not everybody may have an easel at home. But I painted a couple of those with an easel and it works just fine. The paint that we're going to be using for this project is acrylic paint. And I got this paint at Michael's. It's Craft Smart acrylic paint and it's water, water soluble. It washes off your hands, which you're going to get it on your hands. Um, but it washes off with soap and water and these days we are washing our hands quite a lot so that shouldn't be a problem. I'm using just five colors today. The three primary colors which are red, blue, and yellow. And then two other colors which is white and black. Now black is what's going to make all of our colors darker. It will make the red and the blue darker. The white will make the red and the blue lighter and even lighten up the yellow. Um, but you can use all these different paint colors to create lots of different colors. For instance, if you mix the yellow with the red, you'd get an orange. If you mix the blue with the red, you get a purple. So if you mix the white with the blue, you're going to get a lighter blue that can just add interest to your fireworks. So the other supplies that I have here are some basic paint brushes that came in a package of 25 different types of paint brushes at Michael's. And they're not expensive. And these are the four that I'm using today right here. You can see these two are pretty much the same. This one I'm gonna use for wet and then this one for dry. And then these are for details. And hopefully it will all work out right. And then to do our fireworks, I'm using pieces of cardboard that are cut. Now the cardboard I chose is, took some tries, but pretty flimsy, but stiff enough to hold it into a shape that you want to hold it. So this actually came from those dividers that come out of the middle of uh, three ring binders, you know, that have one, two, or A, B, whatever on them. Paper plates that you put, use for a palette. I like to use a T-square if you have one. If you don't, no problem, just you could even use a flat edge of, of cardboard. So I put my canvas, which is 11 by 14 canvas, and you can get these in packages of seven for a pretty good price usually at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Um, 
But anyhow, I put it into this pan, but you could just lay out something like foil. But I, I have the pan, which I got these at the Dollar Tree. And of course, paper towel. And then clear water, two waters, and one to clean my brushes in. And the reason you want water is because water acts as a thinner for acrylic paint. So if you want it to move more easily or spread more easily, you're going to add a little water to it. So you want to get started? So we have to come back down here to the bottom. And it's sort of like, I don't know, it reminds me of painting an ombre picture where the, the colors are going to slightly change and get lighter toward the horizon. And the horizon is where you see the land. Maybe a little bit above the horizon is where you see the, from where you see the land is the horizon line. So the horizon line is probably right about here. Now when your painting is finished, if you want to get a really nice finished look on it and just hang it at home, you can go back around and paint all the edges of the canvas black. So the next color I like to use is the blue because this, when we look through the atmosphere we see blue sky and at night the blue of the sky is a little bit darker so I'm not even going to lighten this at all. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put the blue down like this. Now it's interesting to note, I think, that I am painting from side to side on my canvas. I don't think that's such an important thing for the sky, but it definitely is for the water. Because when you look at it, like the lake, we know that the water hits the shoreline and will it causes waves or ripples in the water that are horizontal to the shoreline. So to get a more realistic water then, you do Now you see I added some water there and it's mixing up into my blue, which is fine. Because I've decided that this side over here is going to be a little lighter maybe than this side over here. I'm going to add some white now, and I really want to make sure my brush is pretty clean before I add this white. So I'm going to clean it out extra good. So when you get the canvas all covered, Dip your brush in a little bit of the water and start blending it down into the white. And if you don't think you have enough darkness, just add some black until you get the sky looking just the way you think it should for the 4th of July without rain. And we have had some rainy 4th of Julys, haven't we? Most of the time though, we've been really lucky in Pike Road. So we're anxious at the Pike Road Art Center for things to open up so we can start classes again. If you didn't know, we do give classes for really ages 12, 10 or 12 and up um, on the weekends. We have a lot of fun. We have weekday classes for adults. Um, 
basically in anything from drawing to watercolors to beginner oil paintings. So what you do want to do is you want to wait for your background painting to dry before you continue. And I did one earlier, so I have a dry one. So we want it to make we want to make sure it's straight. We don't want the horizon, you know, going off on an angle so the earth looks tilted. So let's just take a little bit of this black paint on this small brush and just paint a line. And then because my canvas is a little longer than my T-square, I'll come over here and line it up. And then draw it in again. Alright, so now I have the line that's going to hold the trees. And I uh, wasn't planning on doing houses, but we'll see how that goes. But it's also the place where the fireworks are shot off from. So using this same brush, I want to start putting in my trees. Now, we know that at night, things in the distance like this actually do look very black. But we also know they're not black. We know intuitively that trees are green. So on this one... I added a little bit of the yellow. And then go in and pull in some of that black and pull it into you you get it to about where you think you like it. It might take a while to get to soften the hardness of the black for the distance. So to make these trees, basically what you want to do is you just want to put dabs in and kind of follow the outline. Because you know trees are not solid, are they? If you look at trees, the wind blows through them, they have branches. There are what they call sky holes in trees. And a tree may have a trunk, but it may have a lot of vegetation around it as well. So you want to make sure that you do that. Get the different shapes of vegetation and leave some sky holes. Now I've done this, as, as I've told you, I've done this painting several times. I never get my trees to look exactly the same. they all come out different no matter what and it's kind of fun you get to invent as you go along like decide what your tree is going to look like and then you can have a gap because maybe it's a road you know so you can have a gap here and there and have a big tree come up over here behind a house. Maybe if there was a house there, at least in my example, there's a house. Now one of the things I want to make sure I do is that I don't miss the spot where I want my fireworks to come up. And I want them to shoot up so they're enough going to be in in the picture above and below so I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to just start adding some trees over here so I don't forget that detail this is this is a really big tree that lives over here okay so just mix your 
paintbrush, turn it around, mix it up a little bit. You can see how it really fades into the darker sky with this tall tree that I just did. But just remember too that all trees are not exactly the same, even though they might grow up right next to each other. One might hog out more sun or water than the other, so they're all going to be individuals and be different. So you want variety in your tree shapes. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So once you have your trees in place, What I like to do next is put the reflection of those trees in the water. And the way I like to do reflection is to turn the painting so that it's sideways. And the reason I like to do that is because I can better match what I see. Now, to get the reflection of the water, I don't have to be exact. I can just make these little wispy sort of movements because this is water remember so the water is reflecting here the shadows the night shadows of the tree and this big guy this big guy comes all reaching all the way out and blends in there It's okay to sort of run out of of uh, paint on your brush because that, to me, it makes it just even a little bit more realistic of a watery shadow. So you kind of let it do its thing. And just make sure that you keep the water going horizontal to the shore. because that's the way the waves break on the shore. So for those of you who might not know, the Pike Road Arts Council in Pike Road was created in 2011. And just last year, we were able to move into this building at, on Wallahatchie, which is at the base of the water tower. And uh, we've just been having such a great time in here and trying our best to get art out into the community. And... Uh, We've had art shows, and I think people have really enjoyed uh, having the opportunity to come and learn about art here. We've had some great classes, and I've got some great instructors lined up for whenever we get open, so we're really looking forward to that. All right, so how's that look? Does it look like reflected trees in the water? I think it does. So the next thing we want to do, clean my brush, and I think for this painting, just to keep it simple, I'm going to put the illusion of buildings on the shoreline rather than painting them out as I did, although I love this, and I cast the, the color shadow the same way with the same color, um, almost the same color of the building. Now, one thing that you should note is that when things are reflected in water, 
they're not as bright and vibrant. The color is not as saturated as it is when you see it in, you know, on the ground. So it's going to be a duller color. And we'll come back to that idea when we do the fireworks. But just for now, I did try to dull the colors uh, of the buildings as I put their shadows into the water. But we're not going to do that. We're going to just go ahead with our blackish green here. And we're just going to maybe put a couple shapes in, in black. And pretty much anybody can do the basic house, right? You kind of a rectangle and a pointed roof. Okay, so we're going to start first by putting this section in. This is where the pyrotechnicians are that are actually shooting off the fireworks. But in the photograph, if you'll look at that online, you'll see there's kind of a bluish glow around the area. And it's very light blue and it's very electric looking and I'm never going to be able to replicate that I'm sure but we're just going to sort of put it in there and give a little blue glow in the area and then of course you know we have to bring that down here into the water and that should be good And then you know wherever there are fireworks there's fire somebody's got to light the match so we're going to put in a little bit of maybe make it kind of orange with a yellow and red and sort of like put that in right around in here because it's the glow of the fire right and we'll just put it in down here too and then of course the fire itself the lit fire is going to be the brightest thing we'll save a little yellow for there But what really makes a yellow fire on paint look bright is a little dab of white on it. I don't know if it's too wet for me to do that right now. We'll see. Okay. So that's where our fireworks are going to be shot from. So do you remember seeing fireworks and you see when they are shot from the ground, they go right up. And uh, it's sort of a stream of fire that's shooting into the air before the fireworks actually explode. So I'm going to mix some yellow with the white that I have here and make kind of a yellowy white color. I'm going to put it on this piece of cardboard that I'd already cut. I'm going to dip it into my paint. And the reason you want thin cardboard is you don't, you see how thick this is? I don't want it to be that thick. So I'm going to go straight from my fire. Straight up and lay that down on its side and come up. See how cool that is? I hope you can do this at home. So I want to do the same thing here, but I want it to be a little grayer because it's in the water. So I might pick up just a dab of my black and mix it in over here on the side. By the way, did I tell you this could be messy? You can see I can kind of make a mess. So just go right in here and dab some of that black in there. 
and then do the same thing come down just like that so if it's not perfect there's that's not a problem so we need fireworks so I'm taking another piece of paper that's about the same size but I'm going to bend it I'm just going to curl it with my fingers because I want it to be curled and what's nice about this cardboard is that it'll kind of keep its curl but if I need to I can sort of straighten it out so or I can bend it or if I want more of a so I think I'm going to start with another sh a clean palette as they say for my fireworks because I want them to be pretty clean and I'm going to want some yellow. I'm going to want some red. And I'm going to put some red over here because I think I'm going to want some purple. And I'm going to add some blue to that red to create that purple. And I want white. And then I'm put white over here too. And I'm going to add some blue to the white so I get a lighter blue. Because if it's too dark, you won't see it on the dark sky. So I'm going to take my brush after I clean it up. I'm going to mix in my light blue. Now I will tell you, working with acrylics is that they dry very quickly, which is why you have to keep watering it. And also why I don't like to put out too much at one time because you'll end up really wasting a lot of paint. And then I thought it might make my purple. And purple's great in fireworks, especially in the United States, because it stands for our Purple Mountain's Majesty, which is nice. I think the yellow is great, just as bright as it is, so we're not going to change it, or the red. And of course, we leave the, the white. So now that I've done this much, I'm going to take this little brush here that came in. It's got like a round flat tip on it. Wet it, dip it into the white because what I want to do is mark the positions of my exploding fireworks. So I know I have the one right here that is going to be exploding. But you know, then I have one that kind of fell a little bit already because it already exploded over here. And then another one that probably fell over here and maybe there's no nah, let's put another one right there so we have four fireworks exploding in the sky uh, some people don't like odd numbers so let's let's do another one right there okay so we have the position of our fireworks now if they're further away you probably want to take a smaller piece of cardboard and uh, because they're they're going to be smaller. This one might not even be small enough. Let's go for an even smaller one just to start with. You can always go bigger. So, we'll just start with the small one. This one is in the distance falling to earth over here. We'll give it a little curl with your thumb. And you're just tapping the car you're tapping the cardboard onto the canvas to indicate where you want the explosions to go and if you want like a shorter one just use the end and come up here 
like this. All right. Now you can do the same thing with this one. Maybe curl it a little bit, falling to earth. One thing we can't do in this painting though is replicate the sound of fireworks. Isn't it amazing to hear the sound? They boom, they're so loud. You have to make sure you lock your dogs up at night when it's the 4th of July because dogs get really scared. Animals and horses too, they get scared of fireworks. So you want to make sure that you think about your furry friends on the 4th of July because they don't understand what fireworks are. And if you get a little off, it really doesn't make any difference. Now one thing I like to do too on these is to short a show the the trajectory of the of the firework as it went up there you know from the same point so maybe it just this one I don't have to do it all maybe just part of it and then this one this one So you see they're overlapping each other, but that's what they do in the sky too, right? It's almost like you're making big spider paintings, but the color is going to come. a little irregular and then of course now we have the main one there I never put any fireworks on it but it's gonna be big and huge that should pretty much do it for our, the background of our fireworks so now it's kind of time for color so I like to, the way the Fireworks are red, white, and blue because after all this is the 4th of July and we are celebrating our Independence Day. So we want our independence from Great Britain. Shorter one, I think. And on this one. Let's see, let's put some blue over here with this one. Just, you can make it whatever you want, however you want to make your fireworks. And then let's try some purple. I've been waiting for that purple, right? Let's do it over here on this one. Yeah, that's pretty. Right. So now we want to take, we basically have our red, white, and blue fireworks. It looks like it needs to be filled in a little bit though. So let's take that round brush again and let's dip it in the white and kind of tap off the extra paint onto the paper plate. And then go back here, reload it, tap it off. Didn't get quite enough on there because it's still wet.
so I think it's safe right now to go ahead and um, oh, let's put in some more the little white speckles see the little white speckles around they're fun so you just go to the um, ends of some of these because these are the exploding the fireworks exploding in the sky and you can be very random you don't have to think too much about this just Try to find an end, ends where the color streams come out. And then the other thing is, there's other things happening too. Like, you have to really get a lot of paint off. But you know where the, the smoke is and little particles sort of fall down from fireworks that have already exploded. So you got to get those in too. All right, and is it starting to look more like fireworks now? I hope so. Now let's take some yellow and do the same thing. Clean off your brush and then tap it into your paper plate and just go right back on top of some of those. And for interest, add some exploding yellow. Let it pop. Have it over here. A couple guys. There you go. So I think we have the fireworks pretty much established up in the air. One of the things I want to do with the yellow paint while I have it bright is put some lights in the windows of these houses over here. And I'm just going to take this little flat brush and I'm going to just Put some light in the windows. Maybe the windows down here are on in this house. But you know, these people are probably out watching the fireworks, so they're probably not really at home. Um, and then what you want to do is you just dull that yellow down just a little bit. I'll do it with a little bit of that blue that I mixed up. And then I'm going to come down into the water and just show that reflection in the water of the window. And then another thing I want to do is take a piece of cardboard and dip it in the, the white. Just get, give my windows just a little bit of white light, a little bit of glow. Okay. So now we have to work on the reflection. And remember how I did the reflection of the trees? I'm basically going to do the fireworks in the same way. But I'm going to start with showing where my the centers of my reflection goes. So when you're showing a reflection in the water, you're going to be the same distance from the shore. So like the center of this firework is going to be right there. See that? The center of this one is going to be right here. Here we've got this one, right here. Now that really wasn't a center of a firework, that's okay. So um, here, we'll go right there. This one, here. 
here and this one you see how I'm using my finger on that to measure it with and eyeballing it right to there so that's where my fireworks need to be in the water now remember also I said things are duller in the water than they are in the air so how am I going to make my colors less vibrant and less bright well with acrylics an easy thing to do is to add water you can add color like I could make my reds less bright by adding white makes it sort of a pink or I could just add water and almost get the same effect by watering it down okay so let's try this one So where do I see red? I see red on this one. These are so mixed up that it probably doesn't matter much if you get it completely right because it will look fine um, if you're pretty close. I guess there's a few red ones over here on this one. They were shorter though, weren't they? Let's see, we'll go down here. 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 Those are only two red ones. So let's go find the, the blue. I can dull it down by adding more white to it, making it even a paler blue. So I'm going to try to do that, see how we like that. And this one down here has blue. I must like the color blue. Uh, you caught me because I do. Of course, when you paint this at home, you can make these fireworks any color you want. Because there's no rules, especially in painting. So I'm waiting, I'm going to put the white on here last because I want it to be the brightest um, color that there is. So I have some purple that I need to put in there. And the purple is over here in this one. And I didn't really dull it down because it's sort of dull to start with. It doesn't show up all that well. Okay, so you can see the purple and the red almost look the same as they're dulled out. So let's go ahead and let's use the other side of this and I'm going to put the white in. Now, I could gray out the white with just a little bit of black. I could go in here and now you see that little dot of black 
just totally overtook my white. So now I have to go back and add some more white. This is why I get the big bottles. And mix it in really good. I want it mostly white, but with a gray in it so that it's dulled out. Because like I said, when you see things, the reflection of things in the water is never as bright. Let's see a little bit more white. Maybe. Never as bright as it is when you see it in the air. So it's an interesting thing about reflections because darks, dark colors will look lighter light colors will look darker when they're reflected in the water. See, I didn't know anything about painting when we started this Arts Council. Everything I've ever learned, I've learned through the Arts Council. So that means you, if you don't know anything about art, you can come and learn too. Keep adding um, these little pieces of color until you feel like you're happy with what you're seeing. So I think I've just about got that to where I want it. Wash off the brush, bring it over here, get the water out of it. And I'm going to go with some white. This time though, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of dulling it down with black, I'm going to brighten it up a little bit with some yellow. out of your brush tap it around and then yeah see how much better that is now we have like better explosions color they're not as bright it's working and you know what's even you can even do because it's in the water if I was really brave Let's say make it go like a wave. You have to do that quickly with acrylic so because they do dry out really quickly. Let's go. We'll put this fun color, explosion color there too. And then we need to add our all the little Points and you very lightly you can just go and very lightly tap. Maybe it's better to do it this way, sort of get the waves in very lightly. Get the idea that there's waves picking up color. think we've got a painting. That's our fireworks to take home. Explode them in your house. Have fun doing it. Get a little messy and enjoy your 4th of July.